Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Zdenek Prikvel, and today I'd like to talk about the custom risk 5 instructions, how we can create them and verify them. Before we dive into the topic, uh, let me just briefly introduce the company, who we are, what we do. So Codasip is a leading provider of risk 5 processor IPs and the tools by which you can customize these IPs. What it means is that you can take the risk 5 IP as it is and use it as it is, or you can take the IP and modify them uh, using our tools. So then you can have uh, some unique selling point in your product. And I have a couple of slides on this one uh, later on. The company was founded back, back in 2014 in Brno in Czech Republic, but the technology itself is much older. It's based on more than 10 years of research at the universities here in the Czech Republic. We are founding members of Risk Farm International, and we also introduced the first uh, licensable Risk 5 IP back in November 2015. Headquarters as well as R&D uh, centers are located in Europe, so we have uh, centers in uh, Czech Republic, in Germany, in, uh, in France, and so on. And we have also presence around the world, including China or North, North America. Now, if we talk about the uh, instructions at extensions or extensions in general, let me just briefly introduce how the risk 5 ISI is designed. Well, the ISI is designed in a modular way. What it means is that you have the base integer set of instructions, it's like something like more than 40 instructions. And uh, we have two variants, either you work with uh, 16 registers or 32 registers. And then there are a couple of optional standard extensions, the ones that are ratified already or will be ratified in the future, such as the M for multiple and, uh, and division or C for compact instructions or floating point operations. So then uh, you can pick and choose the combination that you need for your application. But it may happen that actually uh, you need something more than that. You would like to add some, some key differentiation point, uh, meaning that you need some couple of instructions that help you with the code size or maybe help you with the power slash performance. There are many reasons that we can, uh, we can think of why you can go into the non-standard extensions. One thing that I like to uh, mention here is that it's not about the fragmentation. I mean, the risk 5 ISI is designed in a way that uh, allow you to do these things without breaking compatibility with the standard extensions, um, which means that you can take application that is compiled for the standard extensions and you can run it on your version of the CPU. So in this case, we are not speaking about a fragmentation at all. So I kind of touched this slide. So there are many reasons why you can go into customizations. You can, you know, the reason could be that you need uh, uh, better performance. You maybe need to lower power. Maybe you need to do some instruction fusion to save the code size a little bit. Uh, so yeah, there are a couple of reasons why you can why you can do that and benefits uh, as as well. And we can dive into these topics in a couple of more slides. To give you more precise examples uh, how or what you can do, let me just briefly mention two of, uh, use cases that we did with uh, our partners or customers. In this case, we will be focused on the DSP and the cryptography because these are field that, uh, fields that um, uh, the general purpose is not really a uh, best choice because the performance is not as good as you want. I have two examples here. I have an example with Verify, uh, which is the cryptography case, and then the micro semi that's DSP oriented. Let me start with the Verify example here. So they have one of the DSA algorithm and the algorithm does the closed field multiplication. And uh, in the standard, uh, if you take a standard extensions, then it takes about uh, 24 cycles to do the multiplication. That's a key point on this algorithm. But then you can came up with a single instruction that does the multiplication in a single cycle. When we implemented this single instruction, we measured the size and it's about 2% more if you compare to the baseline. But if you look at the performance, it's more than 3x. And at the same time, thanks to the instruction fusion, we were able to reduce the code size by 30%. 
But then if you compare the ratio between the cost on the, on the area side, and then compare the performance and the code size reduction team, the improvement is huge here, and it's definitely worth it to have this single instruction that helps you with the application. Another example that I can share with you is the micro semi example. And uh, this is uh, something that is related to the audio processing. So basically, they needed a CPU with uh, some DSP acceleration for the audio CP, audio processing. There were a couple of other requirements, such as that it has to be low power, small area, and you know they, they were looking for a really fast solution. So then you know we did a couple of iterations in this case, uh, and the iterations are shown in this picture, where we started with the base configuration using a standard uh, extension, and uh, the, uh, the starting point was roughly the same what they have uh, in the previous generation. So the starting point is roughly the same. Then we enabled a couple of more items. So we've started with the standard extensions. So we enabled the M extension, and we have two implementation, implementations. One that's, that is more friendly for power, the second one is more friendly for performance. And as you can see, you know, uh, with the basic one, with the M with uh, sequential multiplier, speed up is already there. And the size increase is there, but it's not significant. And even though if you go with the uh, parallel one, you have a speed of already 13x, and the RI is not that high anymore. Not that high uh, anyhow. What's really important is that we did one more step, because these are the standard extensions, right? What we did is we, we created a custom extension. We added a couple of DSP, DSP extensions. Uh, and uh, then we ended up with more than 56x in terms of performance, yet the area increase is not that significant if you compare that to the, to the um, speed up. So the area went like 2.4x uh, higher than the baseline, but if you compare that with the uh, with the um, performance gain, it's, it's huge. So therefore, they decided to go in, in this direction because it's clear that it's a, it's a winner. There are some other benefits, uh, except the, the performance, because uh, this allowed them to use older technology, which saves some money to them. So there are other benefits uh, uh, in, in this uh, custom extension world. Uh, it's not just about the performance or about, about the power. It can be about uh, also the technology knows that you can use, and therefore about the money. The big question is, OK, how? To choose a custom instruction. How do I know that uh, you know my instruction is actually worth it? In this case, uh, the common approach is that you need to use the profiling uh, tools to find the hotspots uh, in the application, and then you can look at the hotspots and you can try to come up with the new instructions that may help you with uh, the acceleration. You can do instruction fusion as well. Once you have it, you need to uh, reprofile it, rerun the test cases to see the impact, compare the, the uh, two versions, and you basically do the iterations uh, you know, as fast as you can. Because the more iterations you do, the faster you are, and uh, then uh, you, know, you can find a nice solution. In the case of our approach, we have profiling tools that uh, guide you uh, through this process. So then it, uh, the tools will uh, tell you, okay, you know, it's worth it to add this uh, fusion of instruction. Yeah, it is because the profile tells you so. So this, this, uh, you know, something important in this uh, in this approach that you know uh, you should be able to do these iterations as fast as possible, and there should be some kind of guidance um, uh, by the tools. Of course, uh, I mean, if you are an expert in the domain, then uh, you can be much faster. But even if you are not an expert, the tools may help you with this one. And now, okay, so let, we identify a couple of instructions, but then we need to somehow implement them, uh, even in this process. And there are two basic approaches how you can do that. Let's start with the, let's say, manual approach, which means that you need to change a compiler, you need to change a simulator, you need to change intrinsics, low-level programming tools, debuggers, and verify a lot of things. There is nothing wrong in this approach. It's an okay approach, but it's challenging because you need to have bigger teams or at least experienced teams that uh, you know, can do these things. And therefore, it can be time-consuming and expensive. So what if 
you can automate one or two or even all bullets from the list on the left side because then you can be much more productive and you can reduce the time that's needed and therefore resources that you need for that and this is the direction that uh, uh, we uh, have chosen in a codacid to automate as much as possible from the list on the left side and how we do it well we have a studio and the studio is a, is a basically a set of tools for fast and easy modification of risk 5 cpus that we have or in fact you can design something from scratch it was introduced back in 2014 and since then it has been proven by major vendors and the products that were developed or cpus that were developed in a studio have seen silicon many times the key point here is that this processor is described using high-level architecture description language that we call CODO. And you put the information about the ISA as well as about the microarchitecture micro in this description. So you basically describe the whole CPU, not only ISA, but also the microarchitecture, also the implementation of the ISA. So if you look at this language, because this is the key point, it's a C-like language. Uh, that's not tied with any particular architecture or domain. What it means is that you can describe instructions that are simple enough, like bit manipulation instruction, or you can describe the DSP instructions, uh, including uh, the SIMD or vectors, or some uh, loads or stores with uh, pre or post increments, uh, hardware loops, you know, DSP oriented operations, and you can, you know, go even beyond that because the codal is really generic uh, generic language and an example uh, is shown on the right side where you can see a definition of a multi plan accumulate where you can see the actual form of instruction the binary form or encoding of instruction and then more importantly the semantics which as you can see is a is a c a c style uh, or c code that uh, you need you, you you use for uh, behavior of instructions, which is quite convenient because it's easy to follow and easy to read and create. Now, if you if you look at what you can do with CODL, uh, it's a bunch of things, and I already touched a couple of them. So you can have instructions with the multiple input and multiple output operands. I was mentioning scalar and vector instruction or SIMD instructions, of course, the floating point operations, DSP operations. You can also define multiple register files or multiple stack architectures so this is supported uh, by, by studio already and by the language as well on the micro architecture side you can define how the, how many stages you have in the pipeline you can define the memory subsystem that you have including protocols bit waves everything's then there uh, you are you can define uh, the hazard handling uh, either you know, whether you have a forwarding there or whether you need to stall the pipeline for some time. Uh, but we are not stopping uh, like at the micro in the market micro architecture, but you can describe also things like MMU for Linux capable cores, uh, PMA, PMPs, caches, that's part of the code as well. And you can really, really leverage uh, the high automation in, in the studio thanks to that. In automation, uh, let me just briefly touch uh, the outputs that you can get out of the studio. And let me split it into two parts. One is a hardware development kit or HDK for short. And basically it contains the RTL and one of the free languages. So it can be Verilog, VHD or system Verilog. What I like to stress here is that the RTL is human readable. Uh, we keep IDs whenever possible. We uh, respect the hierarchy that the user has, uh, user, user has, and so on. On top of that, uh, there are links back to CODL, which means that if you do some RTL simulation or something like that, that you know exactly uh, which line was generated from which line in CODL, which is really important as well. We are huge believers in the verification and therefore we have a robust story uh, about the verification as well. So Studio generates UVM environment and I have a separate, uh, separate slide on this one. So let me cover it there. Then there, um, there are integration test benches, CDA scripts, uh, system SQL simulation models that allow you to create virtual prototypes. Now that's part of the ADK. In the case of the SDK, 
there is the C uh, or C++ LLVM based compiler libraries such as Newleaf or C++ libraries, low level programming tools, different kind of instruction set simulators, either the fast ones and high performance ones, or the cycle accurate one that really matches cycles by cycle RTL. Then you have the debuggers, profilers, uh, documentation, generator, uh, ISA visualization, and for the uh, verification purposes, there is also a random program generator or the programs that are generated by the random program generator. So this is just uh, you know, the highlights of the outputs that the studio can give you from the single source uh, processor description. So the point is that I you know, would like to mention here is that thanks to the fact that we automate uh, a lot of bullets from the list that we saw in the previous slide, and therefore we reduce the time that's needed for the iterations. And therefore you can uh, do a design space exploration is in, in really short time. You can have several iterations per day to see the impact of your changes if you, if you need those changes. Mm -hmm. Again, we have a profiling tools uh, that help you and guide you for this process. So you are, you are not alone there. And therefore we can do uh, these iterations uh, even more efficiently because the profile tells you uh, information about the hotspots and guides you through the instruction fusion and these kind of things. To give you some numbers, uh, let me uh, introduce the, uh, the work that we did in uh, in the case of the bit manipulation extension, although it's not ratified yet, it seems that it's stable enough. So therefore we uh, have decided to implement that. Uh, and we uh, had a new hire actually a couple a couple months ago. And we uh, we basically decided that uh, she's the one uh, who will do the model. And uh, it took her uh, two weeks to do the functional model. What I mean by that is that by the end of two weeks, we had the SDK. Uh, that's um, aware of the bit manipulation, including the compiler that's able to use uh, these instructions automatically or via the intrinsics. We had uh, the instructions at simulator, profilers, and this kind of tools. So then we uh, you know, can easily see the benefits of uh, these extensions in uh, some areas like cryptography, for instance. Then for her, it took another three weeks to uh, figure out the timing that we were happy with. And by the end of three weeks, we had the RTL, we had verification uh, in place, we had the test benches, uh, we had the random program generator up and running uh, and used by the verification environment. So all in all, it took uh, five weeks to single new hire to implement the Bitmalip from uh, scratch. It shows you the power of a studio uh, you know, because even a single engineer can do a lot of auto things. I was mentioning the verification that then we are huge believers in it. And this is the reason why the studio comes with uh, the verification methodology. Uh, it's UVM based, which means that it's a functional based verification. Mm -hmm. And therefore you need three uh, elements. One is the design under test. The second one is the reference model. And then, of course, you need the test cases that uh, are used for comparing of the reference model and the design of the test RTL in our case. Now, a user uh, has an option to either plug, the, uh, plug um, you know, uh, his own reference model or uh, he can use the automation in the studio as well. And therefore, we can infer the reference model from him as well automatically. The RTL is generated, of course, and then uh, we have a test cases. So now let's see uh, the test cases. Uh, studio comes with uh, three sources or three basic sources. One is that we have embedded test suites or purchase suites, if you will, inside of the studio that are based on the GCC, LLVM, some in-house suites, and then also, of course, the free party suites, uh, such as you know, super test, for instance. This comes uh, or may come with the uh, with the studio, and you, can, as a user, as a designer or verification engineer, you can leverage uh, these embedded uh, suites fully automatically. So you just you know click on the button, and then these tests are used for verification or testing. 
Of course, you can write a direct test, which means that if you have some directed tests, you can, you can plug it there, plug it there, and the test suite will automatically use it, including uh, the verification part. And the last one is a random program generator that I mentioned a couple of times. So it's a tool that's able to generate random streams of instructions. Uh, it uh, can read the instruction set from the processor description. So therefore, it's aware of any instruction that's there. You can constrain this random program generator in many ways. You can constrain which instructions or how often the instructions are used. The same goes with the operands, or like a register operands or immediate operands. So you can do really a lot of things thanks to this constraint. So all in all, if you combine these three sources together, uh, then you have really high coverage in the end. And this is, by the way, what we are doing as well, uh, because then you can be uh, sure that everything's everything's fine. Of course, you can plug uh, the uh, the um, compliance test suite in, and you can use this test suite uh, as well. Although it's not like verification suite, it's more also on the compliance suite. If you look at the verification environment itself in more details, so again, it's a UVM based, and uh, there are a couple of features embedded in this environment, such as code coverage, uh, which means that you can really simply see uh, the, the uh, line coverage, the uh, condition coverage, and these kind of things. Then we also added uh, some functional coverage points in, in that, uh, which means that you can check the protocols uh, that. Uh, um, are uh, used on the memory interfaces. Uh, you can also um, see how the register file is covered, how the instruction set is covered. So this is part of the generated environment automatically. In the case of assertions, it's a similar story. So we have some pre-built assertions like um, checking that uh, the shared resources are treated properly, X propagation, and these kind of things that are part of this ver verification environment as well. And we have test cases, so I already covered this one. So that's part of the UVM environment as well. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, uh, Ferasi provides some VIPs uh, for the on debugging, including the Risk Five debug module, and some checkers on the protocols that uh, comes with the studio as well. This environment is ready to be enhanced as well by the verification engineers. So it means that if you need to add a couple of more assertions, or if you need add a couple of more cover points or cross cover points, you can do that. It's open, human readable, ready to be enhanced by, by a verification engineer. So now let's see uh, how it can be uh, used in real life. So for the demo purposes, what we're gonna see is a URISC-5 processor, which is a CPU that comes with the studio and it is implementation of the basic RISC-V architecture. It uses a five, pipeline stages, and it's heavily inspired by the Peterson and Hennessy book about the RISC-V, so the microarchitecture basically follows this, uh, this book. Uh, it comes uh, with the RV32IM or RV64IM with ZICSR, so the provision mode is there, the M mode is there, and the on-chain debugger is there. So you can take it as a baseline and then build something on top of that. And this is what we're gonna do uh, because we will add uh, one DSP instruction. Let's, uh, let's have the average instruction, which means that we take two source operands and the result is the, the average value uh, of, of these two. So let me switch to the different uh, window and uh, let's, let's, do, let's do the demo. Okay, so now we have a studio up and running and uh, what we can see is that uh, Studio uh, uses Eclipse-based IDE on top of the generators. So we can see the projects on the, on the left side, the main playing route here, here is the middle, tasks that we will be able to do with the projects. And then of course, console that will tell us what's going on. The demo is based on the URISC-5. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import the default one. And there's plenty of other examples in the dashboard but for the time being, let me just import the default one uh, that is uh, prepared for a custom extension already. Uh, if we go to the custom extension, uh, then we have to start with the uh, something that we call instruction accurate model, which is the functional view or the specification, if you will. And as we can see, it's already prepared here. So we need to finish this template and uh, 
with it, let's start with the uh, definition of this uh, instruction. In our case, it's the uh, average. And actually, it's, it's used uh, very well with the predefined element here that describes instruction because we need the R type, which means that we need to have a free register operands to source operands on destination. In the case of the assembly, uh, we need to have the our average instruction here, but the rest is the same. So destination, comma, source, from source two. In the case of the binary, uh, we don't need to change really anything because we can use the predefined opcode for the instruction uh, here as well as for the uh, for the uh, master group. Uh, so this can be can be uh, can be the same, and we can focus more on the semantics which is preferred for us as well. So we have our two operands here, then we can write the results back. So the only thing that needs to be finished really is, uh, is the implementation of the instruction itself, which is uh, quite straightforward in our case. It's, uh, we're gonna do addition of two and then we divide it by two as well. And uh, this is actually what we have to do uh, right now, because we are adding just one single instruction and uh, the template that is prepared here uh, basically suits our needs uh, completely. So the next step that we need to do is uh, generate uh, the SDK. It's a simple step, just double click on uh, SDK target uh, and then uh, let's, uh, let's wait for a minute. So now we have the whole SDK ready, as you can see uh, here in the tasks. So the next step is that we can write uh, a direct test in the, in this case. And uh, the situation is uh, similar. So uh, the project comes with the direct test prepared for the custom extensions already. So basically all we need to do is just add our code into the test. And in our case, uh, let's keep it uh, simple as well. So let's have uh, some tests. So let's have uh, two numbers. Uh, with uh, some values, let's say two and six. And then we need to have some variables, uh, which can be the A uh, equals uh, A and B equals B. And the last step is to just uh, check uh, that the instruction works correctly. So let's use, let's use assert for this one. Uh, we have the predefined uh, built-in. And uh, the, the last step is to write the condition, which uh, should be uh, uh really very simple uh, it should be like this so then we call we will call our instruction and uh let's compare that with the uh, with the compiled result uh, from the compiler this built-in is generated automatically thanks to the fact that we have uh, this uh, this this um, built-in here and basically it follows the assembly definition so now what i'm i'm ready to do is run the test for this purpose, we are using PyTest. Uh, so let me constrain a PyTest a little bit more because in this case, we are interested only in uh, our test, uh, not on the whole test suites that comes with the studio. And let's constrain that to, uh, to uh, our test only, which is called test X. If I do it, uh, I can run, right now uh, run testing. And uh, after a minute, uh, we should be able to see the result. As we can see, all tests passed are related to our group. Uh, we can see also a nice uh, view in terms of uh, HTML report, where you can see that the tests are passing correctly. We have some skipped tests, and these tests are related to the uh, UVM, because right now we uh, don't use UVM, so the tests are skipped, but the tests that are uh, using the simulators passed correctly. Next step uh, is that, okay, uh, we have the direct tests, we have our specification, so let's implement that because, uh, you know, uh, we have to have the reference model, which is in our case, uh, this implementation, uh, and we would like to have the uh, this another test as well. So let's finish finish, finish it as well. Uh, the, uh, for this purpose, we're gonna uh, use uh, the cycle accurate model and uh, there is prepared, uh, prepared files as well. Uh, so what we have to do is basically finish uh, the extension. And it's really similar to the IA model where, the, where we have to just finish the implementation. And in this case, the implementation will be similar, but not the same. Uh, we're gonna use a different uh, style, let's say uh, that we're gonna do the shift uh, 
uh, for the division by two. And uh, in fact, this is all I need to do in this case as well, uh, because this is the code that is then uh, translated to the uh, to the uh, RTL. I'm gonna just uh, uh, limit the bit wave here a little bit uh, to have uh, uh, have uh, more differences in between the implementation and the reference model. Uh, but it's really up to up to the designer. What I can do next is uh, let's see uh, whether we pass UVM. And for this purpose, uh, there is a testing CA. So all I need to do is just click on that button and uh, then I'll check the result. So uh, as you can see uh, right now, all uh, tests passed, uh, including the ones uh, that are uh, UVM based. If I now open the report, uh, we can uh, then check uh, that everything's uh, Fine. As we can see, we can also check the coverage if we need if we need to. So everything is uh, is nice and clean. Uh, the last uh, thing I like to show you is the RTL itself. Uh, so as we can see, it's generated under the HDK directory. We here use a Verilog, and if I open the uh, the extension uh, file, it's quite straightforward. And as we can, there, is a, there are links back to Codal. It's kind of straightforward. We keep IDs, so we have the, our answer answer variable here. So quite straightforward, quite uh, quite easy to follow. And uh, with regards to the UVM, as you can see, the full blown UVM environment, uh, including the reference or Golden model, if you will, was generated automatically for you. So as you see, uh, the urisc 5 CPU is prepared for extensions. It guides you through the process, and it's really easy to, to do the uh, first uh, exploration uh, of uh, custom instructions, including verification. Which leads uh, to the last slide that, that I have for today. Uh, so let me just uh, re repeat some key points to remember. Uh, so custom instructions are there. Uh, risk five specification allows you to do so and actually encourage people to innovate things. It's not a fragmentation because the standard extensions, the ratified one are there and you are compliant with these extensions nonetheless, even though you have uh, uh, more instructions in the end. Uh, we believe in automation and we would like to automate as much as we can from the process of the customization and therefore we have a tool for that. The tool is called Corrosive Studio, and the input to the studio is uh, a processor description in a C-like language that we call Codal. And then we are able to take this, uh, this description and generate the SDK, including uh, C, C++ compilers, simulators, debuggers, profilers, as well as the HDK that includes the RTL, verification environment, uh, test benches, and so on. We have a verification environment generated as well. So then you can use it and uh, you can operate it as a verification engineer that helps you a lot with uh, the checking that everything's fine. Because it's UVM based, you need to have a stimuli. So uh, Studio helps you with that as well. Uh, you can have uh, the ones that are already embedded. You can use random program generator. As of course, you can write your own test as well. And the verification story is something that uh, we are using internally for our IPs as well. So we know that it works properly and we can be sure that the uh, design flow is fine. So thank you for attention. And if you have any, any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.